Well, hello, hello, and welcome. Thank you, Zanoli, for being here. I just already gave um, a brief inter introduction to our listeners um, about you and your bio and how incredibly amazing you are. And um, I'm so excited to have you today. And I, I feel like I stalked you and hunted you down for this. So I so appreciate you taking the time when you have so much going on in your busy schedule. It's an absolute honor to be here with you, Kaylee. And I wanted you to stalk me. So this is phenomenal. It's an amazing opportunity. Thank you. Awesome. Well, I think that your story and, you know, just the inspiration about behind you, who you are and what you do is going to help inspire a lot of people. So I already gave kind of the basics of um, your, your bio on paper, so to speak, but um, I want to kind of dive in a little bit with you about Zanoli the woman. And um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and kind of how you decided to pursue getting into becoming an, an educator in the skin skincare space and specifically in aesthetics industry? It's, it's interesting, actually. Um, so obviously, um, people think I have an accent. I don't think so, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, so I have an accent. It's because I was brought up in South Africa. And um, back then, I was actually studying computers. Oh, <laughs> yes, completely different. And while I was studying, I was working in almost like a Macy's in the career wear department. And one of the girls I went to school with was working at the clinic counter. And every day she would be there in her little lab coat and she would tell me all these things that she'd learned. And I became so fascinated by it. And she said to me, oh my gosh, Sonoli, you know more about this now than I do. Why don't you just go and study it? So halfway through me studying way back computers, I decided to pursue skincare instead. And it's, it's been such an amazing journey from being in South Africa. You know, the types of opportunities I had with the school I specifically chose um, to where I am today has been amazing. So I'm from South Africa. Um, I, a little bit about me is um, I'm a sugar addict, which is not a good thing. And it always freaks me out because oh. what does that do? Because it's doing inflammation to my skin and it just stresses oh. me out. But, you know, um, growing up with um, my brother, who is the complete opposite of me being quiet, um, I'm the super sassy one. So that's who I am. Um, I'm very open and very honest and very direct, um, which sometimes gets me into travel. But it's also made me very determined to get to where I want to go. So when I started skincare, there was this woman that was sitting teaching us about a skincare line. And when I looked at her, I said, that's who I want to be. Wow. And I want to do that in America. And mind you, I'm sitting in South Africa. I don't even know how I'm going to get to America, but I'm going to do this yeah. in America. And why? Why America? I, I don't know. Um, okay. It's a very interesting thing. I'd never been to America. Obviously, our TV programs were in American. But I'd been here for a Disney World trip. And the minute I landed, it felt like I'd come home. Wow. And so I was like, I need to find my path. And how am I going to get here? And I didn't know how. I had no plan. But when I started working for a specific skincare company in London, mind you, um, their corporate office was here in America, and I just asked. And that's the thing, I think, Kaylee, is when you have your mindset on something and you ask the questions, you can't worry about how you're going to get there. You've just got to have this vision. And if you really believe in it, you'll get there. Wow. And here you are now. Here I am, the, 11 the, years later. Yes, and, and the director, and by the way, we met, I, I walked into this room, I was hired um, as to come in and give a talk for Skin Better Science, and you were running the clinical training day. I mean, it was like two groups of 100 plus people in this room. Yes. And I, I was sitting there waiting for my turn to come and talk for 15 minutes or something. And I was mesmerized by the way that you captivated that room. So, I mean, 
I don't, is it just your, um, your comfortableness with the product and the knowledge of, of what you have to talk about that makes you feel so, I don't know, at ease in front of an audience or is it something that comes natural to you? It's, I think it's a little bit of everything in life, but for me, it's this inner belief system and this passion. And even when I hire people, I, I love their backgrounds and their stories, but what I really look for is passion. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's captivating is because I have this true belief in it and this passion for it that allows me to be able to be engaging to others. Mm -hmm. So I want to go back and talk um, a little bit more about that journey because yes. um, clearly you're, you're open, honest, direct, and I would say probably a little bit of stubborn because <laughs> you weren't going to let anything get in your way. So I want to talk more about what were some of those hurdles that you had to face to really get you to where you are today? Oh, gosh. If I have to go back and look, you know, um, one, I didn't have a degree. Um, skincare, as you know, isn't a university degree. Uh -huh. But the type of education I had in South Africa, and I, I cannot thank the Institute that trained me up enough. But I think the hurdle is always, what's your pedigree? What, what is it that you can give me that I can't give myself. And it's like that in any interview or any business that you go in, why should I listen to you? And so that's, I think, one of the biggest hurdles because it's not actually what everyone else wants to know. It's, do you have the faith in yourself? Mm. Do you have the confidence in yourself? Do you have that value in yourself that you feel you have something to give? And if you don't have that true belief in yourself, it doesn't matter what your pedigree is. It doesn't matter how many degrees you have and how hard you worked for all of that. If you don't have that belief in yourself, you won't get there. So is that something you're born with? Is that something you have to condition yourself on? Because yes. And I'm it's a daily journey, Kaylee. It's, it's a daily struggle for some of us. Some days you think, I've got this today. And your little affirmations that you have, and I read these little unicorn affirmations because I truly believe that I'm a little unicorn and it's my, I think it's my spirit animal, even though I don't even know if there is truly unicorns, I believe in them. And so some days, yes, I'm like, I've got this. You've got this today and you believe it. But you know how life is. You get a little knocked down and there's that song, but I get up again. And, and that's the thing. It is going to be a daily chat that you have with yourself because there are going to be days that you struggle and you're like, oh my gosh, what do I truly have to offer? So no, I don't personally think it's something that you're born with, but you do have to have this inner little fire and this inner determination or stubbornness or whatever it is to, to keep you going. You cannot give up. You know, I think about sometimes um, how Beyonce, she has that alter ego, the Sasha right? Fierce. Yes. You know, because I think sometimes we look at people and they talk about their journey or their story and that they just had to ask and believe in themselves. And this is really a common theme. The other um, wonderful, amazing, incredible women I've interviewed on this podcast, they have a very common story as it relates to, I had to do it on my own and yeah. I had to, and it, it took me believing in myself because a lot of people were going to tell me no, and certainly nobody was going to hold my hand and, and carry me through, yeah. you know? And so I am so interested in, you know, what are some of those strategies, like affirmations, like yeah. what, you know, how does one, and by the way, I hope you don't mind me sharing this, but this was just something else that I, I just knew when I learned this about you, that this made you special, but you also are a certified life coach. Yes. And I have a philosophy in business that the when I see somebody who, who routinely invests in themselves and managing their brain and their mindset, that may, I'm always like, that's the, that's the person that I don't want to mess with because that's the person that I'm like, okay, we're all going to face a lot of crap, but they're going to find a way to work themselves through, through it, you know? 
Um, so is that part of that? Is that does that have something to do with with that um, that value system that you have around believing in yourself? I mean, are those related things or something independent? No, it's related. Everything is related. You sometimes think that things are independent, but you know, when you look at the big picture and you just mention it yourself, everyone that has this fierce factor, you included, it's something that, yeah, they, there's got to be some kind of a connection. Um, you might not always see it immediately, but there's absolutely a connection and strong women kind of gravitate towards other strong women. And we try and help those that we can see ourselves need some help. And that's what this life is about. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you came and you talked about, did you went to London before yes. you came to the U S okay. So that transition and did you, do you feel like when you got here, you ultimately, you knew you, I want to be in America. Yes. Right? You had this like staunch goal. Yes. Do you feel like the fact that you were South African, that you had, an accent that you were different, so to speak, played any kind of part in helping or hurting you along the process? Sometimes I felt it hurt me. Um, not in London, because even here in America, it's such a diverse amount of accents. Even the different states have different accents. But I didn't notice. <laughs> I didn't notice that I had an accent until I came to America. And when you pronounce words differently, um, it can be a struggle and you don't realize it. Like even this morning, I was joking on a webinar because I say aluminum and they're like, wait, what is that? It's aluminum in America. Or I say vitamin and you say vitamin. So I think sometimes it does, it can be a challenge because you have to be able to connect to people. And even though you think that you're both speaking English, even that language is sometimes very different. But having that accent, I think in the beginning, I felt so vulnerable because someone actually told me, you can't be on camera. No one's going to understand you. You can't speak anywhere. Um, you know, you're too vibrant and it, no one's going to want to listen to you. So for a very long time, I didn't feel like I could. But there's that stubbornness in me. I'm going to show you. And so there's that belief again. You have to have that belief that I've got something different and unique. And sometimes I felt, yes, my accent is that difference and I'm going to use it. And even my friends were like, don't lose that accent. You've been here in America now for 11 years and you've still got to keep it. It's part of who makes you. Yeah. Well, that was, I'm thankful for their advice. I do agree. And yeah. you, how your vibrance is really so attractive, honestly. You're, you're you. magnetic. I love your energy and being around you. So I want to talk to you a little bit about making your way up to the level that, you know, you're the hat, like you're the head honcho, yeah. right? <laughs> so, but I don't think you started that way. I don't, don't I don't get the impression you probably didn't come to America and all of a sudden you're the national trainer for a, a massive cosmeceutical company in the United States. So um, tell me a little bit about that path of kind of, you know, elevating in your career. Yeah. It's uh, all of us start at the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. You have to, you have to understand what everyone else is going through so that when you do become the head of something, or you do become an, and get put in that leadership position, you can understand every step of the way and connect with everyone else mm. that is just starting out. And so, no. And so I would watch people. Mm. I'm a, I love people watching. I love going into shopping malls and watching humans and how they interact with each other, watching people in the room when I'm teaching and, and guiding and leading. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit of everything, really. You, I watched, how did they get there? And I would understand their story and then go, okay, that's how they got there. How am I going to do the same? And so I'm always looking for ways to improve myself. Not necessarily because I want to be CEO or something, but it's also your own personal growth. Because yeah. even if you're part of a company, you're still your own brand within that company. 
And that's what attracts people to either the brand or to you and your own brand of person. And so it's, oh, I liked what she did. How can I incorporate that in my life? Mm -hmm. I like what that person did. How can I incorporate that into building myself to get to be unique and innovative and different and cutting edge and everything that is personal and professional. And that's what you do. You look at mentors, you look at your friends, you look at other business people, you look at everyone in life and you learn from so many different people. And then you take little bits of those people that were a part of your life to become where you are. Wow. That's, it's interesting. I, I do talk a lot about mentorship because I think that we can only go so far on our own. And yet, God, doesn't it feel lonely sometimes? Oh, you have a goal and you know, no one else is ever going to care as much about your goal as you. Nope. <laughs> Just no matter what, it's like no matter how much money you pay them, <laughs> you know, they won't like either you my husband doesn't care as much about my goal. Yeah. You know, he's like glad you're, you know, glad for me that I'm yes. working toward it and accomplishing it. But, um, did you have somebody that, that you, you know, in particular who you would consider to be, uh, a mentor for you or somebody that sp that inspired you that um, in particular, or was it a collection of different experiences that you had that really shaped that aspect? So it's really interesting because when I used to think of a mentor, I thought it was one person that completely influenced your life. You followed them around, you tried to emulate things that they did, but I never had that. But what mentors are also your friends and people in business. Um, and one, two people in particular, my mom, obviously. One thing my mom always did was let me do everything and try everything so that I could figure out who it is I wanted to be or what it is I wanted to do. Um, so that was one thing is you've got to be open to try everything because you don't know whether you like something unless you've tried it for yourself. So that was one. And the second one was um, a woman that started a huge skincare line. And um, she just, I watched her and she was mesmerizing on stage. And that's what I wanted to emulate. And when you look at your friends, you, you, you birds of a feather flock together. So you look at that as well. So your mentors are also those that you kind of find yourself being in, in a room with. And because you like what they like, it builds you up. Mm -hmm. You're obviously not going to be around people that um, bring you down, but that's also mentorship. You then know what it is that you don't want or don't like or don't want to be like. And so it's a little bit of everything. I know I've said that a couple of times because it's not just one specific thing that helps you to grow. It's so many things. And it's even the things that you know you don't want to be like or <laughs> don't want to do that are actually the biggest life lessons. Right. Um, I have to give your mom credit. Like as a mother, I feel like I would want to protect my kids from failing. And I think that, you know, the fact that she was willing to let you go and discover on your own is huge. Okay. Um, and to that, you know, you mentioned something about looking at mentors as people who influence you in a positive way. But I always try to think when I kind of get off, my compass is off a little bit, or I feel off track. Who in my life makes me feel like the most like me when I'm around them, right? Yes. And that's kind of what I'm hearing you say when you say mm -hmm. your friends or the people that, you know, are, that give you positive energy and kind of fuel you up. And I have to say, I think I've sometimes, I, I don't like to spend a lot of time on Instagram as an example, because I can go in there and there are people that I certainly would look up to, right? What, but then you get caught up and you're like, they're doing that and they're showing that and you start to feel icky and you're like, wait, that's not, that's not influence. That's not mentorship. That's not that, that even if everybody else in the world, right? Like 
I love Tony Robbins. Not everybody does. Yeah. But like if somebody, if he made someone feel bad, they shouldn't follow him. Correct. He shouldn't be a mentor. And so I think it's, it sounds like it just needs to really be a personal thing and that we all need to be okay with that. Absolutely. And, you know, you, you bring up a really good point who I think is inspirational. Others won't, but that's what makes life so unique and so different and exciting is you became who you are because of different influences and the influences in my life versus yours are going to be different, but it makes us even better because then when you and I connect, I can learn so many things and get mentored by you even because of all of your mentorship in your life. And that's what's so amazing. It's like the melting pot, melting right? pot of influence. It's so fantastic. Like exponential, exponential growth, right? Exactly. And even when I listen to previous podcasts of yours and things that other women have said, I'm like, yes. Yeah. And that influences you as well. And it's all of their influences from their lives. It's, it's just, it's so exciting to see how we can help each other in ways that we don't always realize it. And there's a TED talk that speaks about the lollipop factor. Huh. And it's these tiny little lollipop moments that you didn't even realize you've done something for someone else. Mm -hmm. And it's those moments that I hope I've also touched other people's lives, those little lollipop moments. Well, I know you have for a hundred percent fact. You certainly, I'm not sure what the lollipop represents, but I'm, I'm enjoying one of yours. <laughs> okay. So let's go back now to your young South African self thinking about um, the potential and the future and the promise of teaching and educating on skincare in America. And here you are today. What would Zanoli today say to that 20-year-old girl? Uh, one, I am so proud of you. And two, you are enough. We, we keep striving for great things and that's amazing. But while we keep striving for so much to be better, we're young, the world's our oyster, we forget of the achievements we have done and that is being a friend, being a sister, being a daughter. And that without all of those great achievements, you're already amazing and you already are enough. And, and that's the biggest thing. Oh, like makes me <laughs> emotional. Well, my husband said to me yesterday, he said, you know, we're just talking about like my financial goals for my business. And he was like, you, you're winning at life, you know? And mm -hmm. I was like, what? But, you know, and it's like true. I think sometimes, um, and not that I don't, I wouldn't, we don't appreciate those things, but I think, yeah, can you imagine that, that person and what a great exercise to really think back to that girl. Right. Yeah. And how much um, so you? what do you, what would you say is the best compliment you've ever received? Uh, this is a tough one. Because the minute someone says compliment, you think of appearance. Or you have pretty eyes, or oh my gosh, you have a great smile, or oh my gosh, I love your accent. But the biggest compliment is, is sometimes not even a verbal one that someone told me something great about myself, which is already great. Mm -hmm. But it's in the moments when I'm teaching and I'm trying to speak to each person individually. And you see these little light bulb moments go off. Hmm. That they came in and they were looking for some form of value as to why they were there. And they had this expectation and this thought. And the fact that I could help them along their journey is the biggest compliment, I think bigger than someone telling me I have a great smile, which is already great, or, or Zanoli, you've been a great leader in life, or, oh my gosh, that presentation was amazing. It's those silent compliments of the shy ones that you can read in their face when you've done something 
that they were looking for an answer for. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest compliment to me. Mm -hmm. That they got a result. Yes. And they again, a, they, so yeah. would you say that that is a core principle that really guides your value system as an expert really professionally? Is that something that you're looking to achieve? I mean, tell me a little bit about you as the, as the professional, yes. what motivates you? Yeah. Integrity. Mm -hmm. And not trying to make promises that you can't keep. The biggest thing for me in professional life is helping people see their own potential. Even in, like now, I'm in skincare and I love skincare, but they're out there influencing other people's lives, whether that's on the bed or guiding them with the right skincare regimen. We, we judge each other all the time. And the biggest yeah. judgment is appearance. And that's your skin. And, you know, I hear it all the time with, Oh my gosh, I had acne. I was so insecure. I didn't want to go out in the world. I have to hide it with makeup or I just have to hide it. But someone changed my life and my confidence because they were able to give me a skincare regimen that helped me clear up my skin is amazing. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to inspire people and, and do that with integrity and passion and, and just helping them see those little light bulbs. So my core principles are truly about helping others see their own value and their own light bulbs go off. And to be able to do that, you have to understand your guiding principles. And to me, loyalty, integrity, honesty are the biggest ones. Mm -hmm. So do you find that you bring your life coaching experience into the job quite a bit then? So I hope so. Yes. Um, you know, when, when someone comes to me and they go, oh my gosh, Zanoli, I want to do this and this and this. I just ask them some questions and when they can answer their own questions and have come up with the ideas and the thoughts and the answers themselves. Yes. I try and do that on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So I know I didn't really talk about this in the prep, so I might throw you off a little bit, but you mentioned to me when we were talking and I told you that that's something that's on my bucket list is to become a certified life coach. Yes. Um, for a lot of the same reasons, I, I have found through the course of my experience working as a business coach that many of the challenges that business owners face in their professional life are really, they stem from belief systems or habits or value systems that they bring from even childhood or their Correct. personal life and don't even realize it. And sometimes it could just be simply that, that concept of, I need to get out of my own head and believe I can do it. And it's just like, you know, yeah. raw, raw. But I think that there is a finesse to, I can't just tell somebody like, okay, you have time management issues because you, you know, you need to take a day off and you need more time to yourself and you're grinding yourself to the ground, you know, in your home life. They have to kind of discover that on their own. And I think that there's like a, you know, very um, polished way to help them want to and become motivated to identify those things. Um, but you did mention to me, cause I, I'm thinking of right now, my li our listeners who are like, okay, you're talking about this life coaching stuff, but like, what is, what is a life coach? And you mentioned to me that people don't really understand the difference between like a, a therapist or a psychologist and a life coach. So I know it's a little bit off, but just quickly. <laughs> yes. So therapy is all about your past. And that muscle memory and things you grew up with and, and that's become a part of your belief system and who you are inside. Coaching, we don't give advice mm -hmm. and it's all about your future. What we do is we help you find your own answers because you are the only one that can answer yourself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't want to do that on our own and, and sometimes we don't want to answer it. So it 
it helps when someone else asks you those questions, those tough questions, loving, tough questions that you have to answer yourself. Because when you come to that realization, we can help move you forward. And it is truly all about your future. How can we get you from here to there mm -hmm. without telling you what to do? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't believe in it, you won't do it. Mm -hmm. And so, and, the and question, there, you know, is your happiness. Exactly. <laughs> you have to have that. And if you believe in something and when you think about something and it makes you warm and fuzzy and gooey like a hot chocolate fudge sundae, then you know you're on the right track then it, it's got to be this inside warm feeling. And then you know. And that's what will motivate oh, you to carry on. I know that feeling, but it's so hard to let yourself feel that. If it was easy, everyone would just go out and do it. Mm -hmm. And you have to have the bad with the good because the good comes from that bad and that experience. and for you to truly appreciate that warm, gooey happiness, you have to have experienced the bad. And that's the yin and yang in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like setting the barometer, right? right. Or the baseline. <laughs> and how can you appreciate the good? Right. Yes, that's such a, that's such a, an insightful way to think about the challenges that you face in life. Like, I know how, if it feels so bad, this is just absolutely going to kill me right now. It's going to be that much more amazing later, right? Exactly. <laughs> that whole silver lining, that whole rainbow and gold pot at the end makes yeah. everything so worth it. Yeah. And, but you can't just think of that negative. You've got to enjoy the journey of getting there too. Yeah. You can't just get there. Well, no, because you, you can't do it. So you're going to be miserable the whole time. And then you're going to give up if you can't, right? So you have right. to practice enjoying that. So what is next for Zanoli? Uh, <laughs> I know I've said this, but never out loud. Um, so obviously, I love what I do. And I will always do something in this. But I'm going to put it out there. I really am going to be doing a TED Talk one day. I don't know how, I don't know on what, but I am going to do a TED Talk. Well, I have three pages of notes um, that I could outline for you because it sounds like you pretty much got it ready to go and teed up, girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> because you've got me in chills. Oh. Um, I mean, just... If anybody is listening to this and worried or thinking about if they're worth it or what they need to become or what they need to do or what they need to accomplish to be worthy, I mean, no, you're already them. enough. And it, we sometimes forget to just give ourselves the hug and not always expect it from someone else because it's not as important from yeah. someone else. Yeah. You have to congratulate yourself and Celebrate your little wins because every win is a win. Mm -hmm. I listened to an interview with um, an Olympic gold medalist, um, track and field star, just yesterday. And she, uh, from our perspective, I mean, you can't go much higher than winning oh a gosh. In the Olympics <laughs> to pain, right? Or be, becoming the top 1% of the 1% in your field. And she said that she didn't realize how a unhappy she was and how the, that process of getting to that point she had been she had to learn how to love herself in a different way and that she it took a, a year of working with a sports psychologist because she talked about how she used to get on the starting line you know like before the gun went off and she would talk about you know, well, don't do this. Don't do that. Don't, you know, like negative. 
And I started thinking about that when I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, you got a little extra here or that or flab or, you know, it's like, what if we just loved ourselves as much as we loved other people, you know? <laughs> the way we compliment others and the way we motivate others, the, your biggest fan should be you. Mm -hmm. And if you just focus on the negative, that's all you will attract. Right. So we have to focus on the positive. We need to focus on the positive. We should, because then that's what we will attract. And then your dreams, as small as you think they are, they're massive dreams and they will come to fruition. You just have to believe in yourself and celebrate those little wins every single day. Yes. So Noli, my final question for you so what does having the fierce factor mean to you? You know, it's, we, we basically pretty much said it. You've got to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. But even bigger than that is we've got to keep lifting up each other as well. Mm -hmm. Because this world we live in can only be amazing with amazing people in it. And we've got to see the good in ourselves and that will emanate to everyone else and smile and just be determined and believe that you're going to get there and you will. That fierceness is in you. That inner child, that inner different person, that Sasha, as you mentioned, from whoever, it, you're, my inner unicorn, it's got to come out and the only way it can come out is if you believe in that fierceness in yourself and know the fear, feel the fear, and do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Unleash the unicorn. Right? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I have so enjoyed our time together, oh. and I'm so inspired, and I know that so many people are going to not just learn and listen, but be able to absorb and implement some of the great advice that you've given today. So I so appreciate. Oh my gosh, Kaylee. Thank you every single day for always being you and for inspiring all of us to be better. So Zanoli, how can, um, if somebody wants to touch base with you about, not that you have so much time on your hands, but they want to come to your, one of your webinars or want to, you know, explore life coaching or, you know, all of those types of things. Yeah, so um, our webinars are exclusive to Skin Better accounts. So you oh, would need to be, uh, be a well, part of an know. account for those. But with the life coaching, um, I'm on Instagram and my Instagram handle is Aesthetic Mastery with an A, the British spelling. Um, and just direct message me and um, connect with me. And I know we can all help each other. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.